On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and that's this place. Welcome to Gadget Belgium, Belgium's one and only retro cult toy store that you can visit. And today, they are hosting their annual Star Wars Fan Day. We are going to go around, talk to the people, talk to the owners, take a look at the toys, and also, of course, have a good time. Want to know what it's like inside Belgium's smallest but most intense toy store? Want to know what the Star Wars fans really really think about J.J. Abrams? Well, we will find out. Until then, live long and prosper. What? What? No, 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 I'm a citizen of the... Call Spock! Call Spock! Cut! Thank you all. We're here today in Gadget Belgium, the one and only really retro comic book store in Ghent, to interview the owner, uh, Eve, who is constantly under guard of at least one Imperial Stormtrooper. We were told to be careful, there were Stormtroopers around, but we know they, as a fact, cannot hit anything, even if they want to. How? So, Eve, this gives us a moment to, uh, our, while we're under Imperial Guard, to talk a little bit about Gadget Belgium. What is Gadget Belgium? Well, first remark, not a comic shop at all. No, it's, it's actually a toy store. Yeah, it's a toy store. We only do the toys and uh, the collectibles, mostly vintage, actually, and uh, also the latest new ones. Um, yeah, we buy, we sell, we trade nearly 20 years, and it goes from uh, 70s till now, actually. There are also uh, other toy stores that sell really vintage uh, toys, we take the level from the, uh, the 70s and most of the time uh, movie, film, comic related. So comic store, comics related. It runs together but we don't sell comics because... It's a, it's a cult toy store. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the correct name for it, yeah. So you've been, you've been at this for, for about 20 years. What, mm. what gave you the initial idea of, you know what, I'm going to start out with a retro, uh, retro toy store? I really started collecting toys early. I was like 13 years old. I never had an action figure. Uh, and uh, I just got, by accident, 13 Star Wars figures for free. And then I was started. I started collecting. I called all the old toy stores. Uh, dig up some stock, but not too much. And actually, after two years later, uh, one of my friends told me that he saw something on the flea market. Uh, oh, yeah, why, why won't I go and look on the flea market? And you saw other people buying it as well. It was also a collector, and we started trading. And actually, no collector is no dealer. You always trade, you always find something that you know it's... Uh, people are looking for it, so you, you already have it, you buy it and you, you trade it. And uh, the contact in uh, the US came early and in those days it was, uh, it was crazy. You could find a lot of stuff here that was impossible to find in the US and a lot of stuff there that was impossible to find over here. A so lot of massive brown boxes going across the ocean. Yes, yes. and that is how it started. And actually, the love of toys, I'm sorry. It's... Uh, <laughs> You can't collect everything, so why don't I start a business with it? I can see a lot of it, so and it really happened that I really purchased uh, large old store, uh, toy store stocks, actually dealer stocks. Uh, you started to sell it, it was uh, really interesting in the US, and when it was all gone, it, I, I was missing it, and I started collecting it as well, so it's like an ongoing uh, 
business and hobby of buying, selling and trading for me as well. And that's the fun of it. Because the stuff you have over here, which is, which is quite impressive. I mean, there is um, something that Doctor Who could learn about this because, you know, in the TARDIS, you have more room on the outside than the inside. <laughs> Eve does not have that luxury. Yes, he and yet he does manage to get. I don't know how much. How much is in this store? This is four floors. Uh, well, actually, the store is what it is now, but like we still have a stock. It's uh, a little bit bigger than the store, and it's uh, four floors full of toys. And most of the collectors that come here, they know ahead. Like if I'm coming, I let them know uh, we can plan ahead what we can show and so on. Because there's a lot of old stuff. It's fragile. It's uh, hey, we have to take well care of it. So we, we prefer to keep it in our stock. If the people are coming, they can look at it. Um, because uh, otherwise if you expose everything sometimes you have kids here it's like wow this is a nice extra but you have something else. it's like 1200 euros yeah, you know, so we try to avoid this the store is uh, also functional like people see what we're, we are buying it's uh, like I think 10 years or 15 years ago there were a lot of more stores in, in, in Europe but with the internet they all stopped and they said oh internet is it's a most profitable business but but the store, it's, it's still the, 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 the place where people can come over and trade and, and, and even talk. Like, uh, we, we, we really had also the idea of combining the store with kind of a, you could say, a pub that people can share interests with each other and so on. And it's like, it's sometimes a necessity because I know there are people that are in certain way collecting, but just like behind their own computer and just buying 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 but that's not the real fun of it it's the, the the store does have and that's something we noticed a very social function i mean when you come yeah. here i i came here a couple of um, months ago i was late to the walking dead party <laughs> and i i ran around with my hands pressed to my ears because other geeks that were here were vigorously talking about spoilers yeah. so it also has a social function now when we take a look at everything around us star wars is of course this guy's not for sale by the way oh, although his mother negotiate, <laughs> negotiate. yeah his mother told me we could sell him if it was a girl but whatever no offense um you have all kinds of stuff here star wars stuff you have star trek stuff i even see you know r really obscure stuff what makes stuff like this still so popular? Do you get a lot of people that come in here, see a toy that they couldn't get as a kid because they didn't behave and buy it? Yeah, yeah that happens uh, like, uh, people they used to have it as a kid, they lost it, it was sold it because they had to buy something uh, something uh, differently and uh, they, they just want to have their own toys back again. Um, it's so, actually if, if, if you start thinking about it, Everybody likes to talk about the childhood, what they did and so on. So that's nearly the same thing. You don't have to be a vivid collector who has really everything. If you just have the toys that you uh, uh, had or, or if you always wanted to have, and you can share it with other people. That's most of the fun of it. Hey, it's, it's quite... That, that's, my, that's my excuse. <laughs> my <laughs> but it's excuse. quite impressive. Some people say, oh, my collection is complete. I have everything from number one uh, till number two, uh, 100, and it's mint and packets and it's not always uh, uh, it's 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 impressive when you hear that uh, how they collected it but the investment they take on it, it it's a pressure they have and that's what uh, that's what i notice about uh, a lot of collectors uh, the pressure uh, that's not the fun of it it's really fun like just uh, finding, finding something, something on the most amazing uh, spot like <coughs> if you uh, some people uh, came here uh, uh, they, they liked Star Wars, but they 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 uh, never thought of collecting it. They never threw it away. It, and it was still uh, kept by other family and so on. So those f uh, figures, they they used to have them as their, uh, their own. And they say, always say uh, the same thing: it's the most valuable thing I have. What it's for me. Like recently, I saw a documentary about the vintage scanner toys. And it was so pleasing to see one of the the people just uh, showing a vehicle from his own it was broken it was missing all the parts but he said this is this is my this piece is mine. yeah and that's wow that's correct uh, the correct collector a uh, fan you know because there's always a big difference there are collectors and fans and there are collectors and investors 
you know, sometimes people came here in the store and said, oh man, is, is, all, this, is all this junk worth uh, doing it? And then they see price. Oh, and now these, these people are like collectors, they, they have everything, they have everything and on a too short time. And those are the investors you know what i mean they really buy like like buy like real house. estate yeah. yeah there's only one house that i can live in but i have five yeah. and then there are people who say i want really something specific or there are mm-hmm. people who say i want that from my childhood because i yeah. didn't get it yeah. so um why should people come <laughs> except for the fact that you have the most massive uh yeah. concentration of memorabilia and and childhood memories and also new stuff why do they come why should they come to gadget belgium <laughs> well from time to time we also had people and the ask us is this for sale because it's kind of nearly like a museum i have no problem that you come over and just look around it's it's no problem and tell people about it you never know if someone has something that he wants to sell or just if he wants to find a better condition and so on it's uh it's no problem to come over here in the store and and if you want to buy something you will always find something if you just want to look no problem go ahead and if you just want to have information about toys (laughs) that's what we love the most (laughs) talking about toys so no problem when you come don't go like i have a bus to catch in (laughs) 10 minutes Make sure that you say, I have nothing to do tomorrow and I have a substantial amount of cash that I don't really need and I can't put it into the stove. So thank you, Eve, no um, no for Gadget Belgium and for, for showing us Gadget Belgium, for telling us about it. We will be looking around a little bit more because it is Star Wars Fan Day today yep. and uh, we wish you all the luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs> I'm here with Tim Veekhoven from TK421, the Belgian Star Wars fan club, at the annual Star Wars fan club day here at Gadget Belgium in Ghent. Um, Tim, well, what is TK421? Well, TK421 is the Belgian Star Wars fan club. Uh, the fan club was founded in 1997. And yeah, we're still going strong today and we have just published our 69th issue of our TK421 magazine. And you have uh, Belgian crew, uh, B- Belgian members all around the country, French, uh, German, uh, German, and Flemish speaking, or well, everybody is allowed to join our fan club. But since our magazine is in Dutch, well, yeah, with the Belgian issues, it's uh, of course more logical that the uh, most of our members are uh, Flemish and also, of course, from the Netherlands, okay, because they are also allowed, of course, to join us. So TK421 is, is it's not a garrison, correct? It's not a complete cosplay organization. Anybody can join. Anybody can join. It doesn't matter if you collect. It doesn't matter if you have a costume. It doesn't matter if you know everything about Star Wars. Everyone is allowed to join. And yeah, everyone is welcome. So you have a website, you have a, uh, a, a magazine that you actually publish. Yeah and you have these meetings. Now, of course, the question that is going to be at the foremost of my mind is, we have episode seven coming out. Uh, How do you feel about J.J. Abrams taking over from uh, George Lucas after what he did to Star Trek? Uh, I think it's a very good solution, very good idea, because the Star Trek movies from Abrams are practically the only Star Trek movies that I like. He, uh, sorry about this Star Trek fans, but he kind of Star wars the Star Trek movies. That's a very good expression. He did actually Star Wars the Star Trek movie. So what are you guys expecting? What are you guys afraid of that he might do with the franchise? I don't think that, well, personally, I'm not afraid of anything that will happen. The only thing that might happen eventually after, like, say, 10 years is the um, amount of movies that are coming in a very short uh, a period of time. I mean, we have the three sequels coming up, but there are also at least three spin-offs planned. And Disney is planning to release them very shortly after each other. So it's curious to see, uh, to to find out how the public will react because, well, in the uh, past 35 years, we've only seen uh, six Star Wars movies. Let's let's say let, uh, The Phantom Menace wasn't really a Star Wars movie. <laughs> well, that's uh, not my opinion. But uh, okay, Jar Jar Binks isn't really a Star Wars character. 
Uh, he was uh, more than redeemed in the Clone Wars. He got shot. Did he get shot in the Clone Wars? No, no, oh. no, no, no. He might appear in Episode Seven. Who knows? Okay, okay. So, what's the story going to be around? Because you died, you don't have a job anymore. So, wh what's gonna? What's the story going to be like in in Episode Seven? Well, officially, uh, we don't know anything about it. But of course, there are always spoilers uh, flo uh, floating around on the internet. But yeah, it's it's unsure whether they are true or where, whether they are false. There will be, uh, well, foundations of truth in them, but it's hard to tell right now. So on a time scale, this is not like, um, let me see here, four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. So this is going to be after Return of the Jedi. So as I said, you're dead, you're out of a job. So are they going to pick up where they left off? Because you know, Mark Hamill's kind of getting old and Harrison Ford breaks things if he just walks out the door. Yeah, well, the movie will take place 30 years after Return of the Jedi. So the, yeah, the characters will have grown in the same uh, yeah, amount of time as the actors did. Except that uh, Carrie Fisher, she's aged like 50 years. <laughs> uh, she, she doesn't, she, she looked rather good on the last uh, oh, okay. photo. So. so that's where it's going to take off. Are you excited? Because there's uh, not only um, the movie coming out, we have a sequel coming out to uh, The Clone Wars, which is called Rebels. Uh, there are spin-off movies in the making. Is it going to be back to the 70s Star Wars craziness for five years straight? Uh, I think it's better to, to, to say that we are back in 1999 where the prequel started because yeah, there is another uh, trilogy going to begin and even more. So I think it's a very exciting time for people to become a Star Wars fan or to, yeah, to stay a Star Wars fan. So if they want to be a Star Wars fan or they are a Star Wars fan or they will become a Star Wars fan, where can they find TK-429? Uh, they can find our... 421, sorry. Yeah. Wrong trooper. They can find our fan club on the internet, uh, www.tk421.be or just type in our fan club name on Facebook and you can find our Facebook page. Okay, thank you very much for uh, giving us a very good view at the fan club and the Star Wars uh, universe that has been and that is to come. Thank you, Tim. Good luck with the fan day and good luck with the fan club. Thank you very much and thank you for the interview. Thank you. I'm here with uh, Jeroen, who is in the impressive Stormtrooper outfit that we have come to know and love, and which has become a part of an icon, a cultural icon of our modern day sci-fi history, the Stormtrooper outfit. Um, just tell me, how long does it take you to put this on? Um, well, I, I would say a half an hour or so, but kind of depends if you have help you can do it a lot quicker but most people can't even put them on without help without aid so I'm already kind of special for that because I, I had to make it so I could put everything on everything on myself but that makes it also that I have to, that it takes longer for me to put it on so basically this consists of a black jumpsuit and um, how many components? Uh, I believe it were 38 or 35 or so. But if you that all if you assemble them all, you will come around 1820 or so. So it depends if you count them as a whole, if everything apart, or once it's completely assembled. And you can actually buy these, or build these, or collect these, or, or assemble these? You can assemble these. You can, you can, perhaps you can try to find someone who completes the build it for you, but that will never be good, because the parts are all standard, but you have to fit them to your own body type. Because that that's what I see. By, I mean, Americans have fat stormtroopers. I mean, when you see, when you go to Comic-Con, there are guys like this. They would fill. They would make the Death Star tip over. I mean, is this custom to your size, or are there? Do you buy like a breastplate in L X L, X X X X L? No, they. What they do is they make. If everyone who make it makes it just makes one form, but you can cut pieces off, trim them yourself to make them smaller or bigger, and uh, be, there are also different manufacturers. And some specialize on the more 
people with more may- weight, let's say, or, or more skinny people. So you have to know your own body type, then you can look for a, for a manufacturer who makes something that would fit you, and then you still need to fit it to your own body size exactly. Like so so own. so if you're small, you can be short for a stormtrooper? Yeah, you certainly can, but you have to look for a very specific person who made it especially for shorter people. Then. It's, it's an amazing costume, and we have to ask, how do you pee in this? <laughs> Well, you... Very strip. carefully, I guess. <laughs> you strip half naked first. <laughs> you can't put everything on. So at first, chest plates get removed. And then I can try to move this. But then I can remove my belt and I can lift this up. And I can pee. And for shitting, it's like a little bit more difficult. <laughs> then I must just have to remove everything up till here. <laughs> So it's completely undressing. <laughs> the rebels should not have gone for the exhaust vent of uh, the Death Star. They just, if they clogged the toilets on the Death Star, that would have been fine. Or just, you know, give them all diarrhea. They would be gone for hours. So thank you for um, giving us the explanation. Um, how is it to, uh, what's it like to walk around in this? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> in one word, hot. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of cool for, um, well, people recognize it everywhere and they're like, whoa, a stormtrooper, wanna take pictures. It's nice. The helmet makes me incognito, so I can do whatever I want and that's nice too. <laughs> so, so you could wear a bathing suit and have a helmet on and nobody would recognize you. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much and enjoy your day. Okay, thank you very much. (laughs) Okay, that was all we have time for here today at the Star Wars Fan Club Day in Gadget Belgium, Belgium's smallest but most intense retro toy store in the entire country of Belgium. That's why it's Belgium's whatever okay it's time for us to let you guys go and hope that we will cross beams or cross swords or lightsabers here one day between all of these interesting collectabilia thank you Eve for joining us and thank you for the TIE fighter croque messieurs which is for you French and for you French you know what it is but for you Americans croque monsieur is unpronounceable thank you for having us and uh, we'll hope to see a lot more of Gadget Belgium it was my pleasure (laughs) Okay, um, there is actually one Star Wars movie that you never saw, and here's the reason why. The movie was called The Empire Sits Down, and this is the Empire trying to sit down. If you ever saw why stormtroopers don't sit down, watch this. I've seen geriatric people go down with more ease. Ladies and gentlemen, This is the movie you never saw, The Empire Sits Down.